quick message from our sponsor. Imagine if you could make your destination page match your messaging, eliminate leaks and distractions when sending someone from an ad or message, remove friction and make it easy to buy. Dream no more. Checkout Links is a simple but powerful app that lets you quickly create specialized bundles in a mini landing page that syncs directly with your Shopify checkout. Preload the shopping cart to reflect your order in that specialized bundle. You can automatically apply discounts so they don't have to manually type it in. And then you can also track individual link performance and so much more. You can find other creative ways to use them with your paid ads, customer support chats, holiday offers, new product launches, email and SMS campaigns, or even rewarding your VIP customers. Go to checkoutlinks.com slash Matt to learn more and install the Shopify app. That's checkoutlinks.com slash Matt. Quick shout out from our sponsor, Sheer ID. Are you trying to boost conversions to your Shopify store? Need to drive more customer loyalty? Get results fast by offering exclusive discounts to consumer communities with Sheer ID. Sheer ID helps verify students, teachers, military, first responders, and so much more of these groups. With Sheer ID, you'll get a verified match in seconds. You can spit out an exclusive discount for customers on the spot. Try speaking directly to a new customer segment with this verifiable identity without adding friction to the shopping experience. Continue to drive incremental revenue in the next 90 days post-purchase with more tailored messaging for your email and SMS campaigns. I personally tested Share ID to see just how easy it was to get set up, and I was pretty much ready to go in under 15 minutes. The onboarding was simple enough for me to follow as a non-technical person. Go to sheerid.com slash Shopify and start your free trial today. Once again, that's sheerid.com slash Shopify and start your free trial today. If you had to have must-haves, uh, narrow it down a little bit uh, for like a store under a million dollars. Upsell, cross-sell, like whether it's, you know, pre-sale, post-purchase, whatever the case may be all of the above, you definitely want to have something like that in place. Personalization on the website, whether it's offering upcharging on per product pricing, like if you were selling fabrics or wedding invitations or cakes or whatever, and you want to be able to like offer specific specifications mm. in that. Um, or uh, if you want to do some kind of on-site search that's very personalized or there's various ways where you can personalize the page. But I think having those types of things in there and then the reviews part, like that's yeah. 100% necessary. Hello and welcome to e-commerce uncovered. I'm your host, Matt Lady. Each and every week I get to talk with and learn from enthusiastic guests, freelancers, agency folks, in-house marketers and founders all in an effort to help you bootstrap your D2C brand profitably. We got two episodes a week, which will have you staying up to date on the ever-changing industry and learning fundamental concepts and tactics to apply to your brand. Enjoy the show. Today's episode is with the Director of Marketing of LTV SaaS Growth Fund, and we're here to talk about Shopify apps, live shopping, and mental health during Q4 Black Friday Cyber Monday. Please welcome Deb Mecca. Deb, why have you been so focused on marketing for Shopify apps? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me today, Matt. Really excited to be here. Shopify apps was something that I slipped on on accident, which is a funny kind of story because I was actually on the development side when I started in the Shopify ecosystem in 2013. And I went to the first Shopify Unite and I was like really excited. And Toby got up on stage and he was like, opportunities everywhere. And I was like, yes, it is. And I came back and I quit my job and I was ready to start a development company. And because uh, Miami didn't have a whole lot and there was just a ton of opportunity. And um, the the guy that I had worked for reminded me that I had a non compete, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that." And I respected him; he's a mentor of mine. I really we we have a very very good relationship okay. still to this day. Um, but you know, just out of respect, I was like, "You know what? You're right. I'm not going to do that." And I had met a bunch of Shopify app owners when I was at Unite, and back then it was definitely a very different playing field because they didn't have VC money. They didn't have, you know, full teams. It was basically like 
the developer and then like another person or the developer and like five different people that were wearing like 20 hats. And so the opportunity for me really was endless at that time. And so I just kind of carved out a little niche and I was the first to do it. And uh, here we are, I don't know how many years later, still, still doing it and loving it. So, yeah. Sweet. Okay. So uh, knowing that have like, that's great context and backstory uh, for the rest of the conversation. So how you mentioned that the opportunities have changed and there's much more competition and money and all this stuff now, and so many options for most functionality and features. There's no, like, there's very few, it's this app or nothing anymore. Right. So how, knowing that, um, as a bootstrap founder, one that's often limited by time, money, or skill and knowledge, how can we help them navigate how to like, what apps do they need? What features and functionality they should be looking to solve for or problems and solutions. How can we help them like navigate that? Cause I'm sure it's, uh, it's really tough as I've, I've built a couple stores and done some side stuff and man, it's, 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 it's a lot. So how can we help them out? It is. It's like, I akin it to going to like a Sephora if you're a female and you're looking for like a lipstick or something. It's like, holy crow, what do I, where do I even begin? Yeah. I am lost in the sea of madness, you know, and not even just lipstick, just makeup in general. You're like, what am I going to do? So yes, there, there are a lot of different options. There's like 7,000 705 Shopify apps in the app store today. So, and it just keeps growing. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of, there's, so you, there's utility apps and then there's non-utility apps. And, and I think that there is room for bootstrappers to have a combination of both because I think they both can do things that value, you know, bring value to the store that help with either growth or functionality or overcoming some kind of barrier to entry of some description. You know, if it was me, I would be looking for, uh, you know, obviously I'm a little bit of a fan girl, but I also think that the industry probably thinks a very similar thing. Um, you need something like Klaviyo where you're going to capture your emails and be able to, to speak to your audience and do yeah. it in a way that's tasteful. So Klaviyo has tools and I don't work for Klaviyo. I have nothing to do with them. There's nothing, I don't have affiliate links or anything like that. Um, but there's just something to be said about like, if you can only choose a handful of apps, like that's the first one I'm going for because you could be running paid ads. Where are you, what are you going to do with nurturing them? How are you going to determine who's your high value customers? How are you going to determine who you really need to not really spend any time on? And the only way to do that is to have sophistication like a Clavio and they have like a free version. So they help you sort of grow up with them. Um, so yeah, I think, so I'd say Clavio would be something or so, you know, something like a Clavio would be, be my first go-to. Um, and then I would say you need things like to track things. So like if you are running any kind of ads of any kind, or you need any kind of like automation stuff happening, there's, there's tools like, um, like rewind is like a backup system. So if you F up in any way, you can sort of go back to, to where you came from and you may think, well, I don't really need that. Like I don't tinker around too much with my store. But that minute that you do do that tinker and it does cause a big problem, you are going to want something like that. So I always sort of think of like, if you're buying a house, you want to kind of build the blocks that are going to help you for the long term. Uh, and, and Rewind is something that's going to enable you to do that. Things like Alloy Automation are going to kind of help you plug into all your different systems and stuff. And you may say like, once again, like, do I need that level of sophistication? Yeah, you will. Again, you're building those blocks. And while you're building the blocks, you want to have kind of those tools in place. So something like that. Um, and then you're going to need stuff for like shipping, fulfillment, inventory management. Uh, you know, unless you're a drop shipper, you're going to need a solution. There's a solution for like if you have... Um, even like two, three, four different locations, um, there's a solution called SKU Labs that is an integrated inventory management solution that's going to help you pack, ship, inventory control, like all the things that you need to do to run your business very efficiently. Again, do you need that level of expense in the beginning? I'm going to argue yes, like you, you absolutely do. And then we're getting into like utility stuff. So if you are driving traffic, right, or you 
obviously you're going to have to somehow figure out a way to drive traffic. Um, then you want to optimize for that traffic. So having things in place like upsells, having things like, you know, the ability to offer cross sells, upsells, product customizations, personalization on the product pages. Um, all of that stuff is really important. And then do I want a discount? Do I want to offer like a multiple discount thing? Do I want to offer like my store as kind of a split store of like wholesale pricing versus, you know, yeah. retail pricing um, and being able to gate that access. So those are just some of the things kind of off the top of my head. Also, sure. like if you are going to be launching new products, doing like a pre-order strategy or instead of having out of stock badges, you're going to have back in stock badges. So I, those things seem like nice to haves or, oh, if I only had that much money to have all that stuff, but like it all matters. Like if I go to a store, I went to a store the other day and there were like so many of the items were out of stock and I was really turned off and like, I was really interested in the products, but I'm like, are they just not replenishing? Are they going into business? Like, should I trust that this is going to even arrive if I do find a product that's in stock? You know, it just kind of like the trust just goes away. Oh, speaking of trust reviews, you need a way to capture reviews because the only way to get people that are going to be interested in what you offer is by say, seeing other people either wearing it, reading about what they have to say about it. Um, so you need to be able to capture that type of stuff in the onset. So yeah. having some review capture thing would be great. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a, that's a great starting point. A great place for us. To, you built the foundation and we can build off of that. Uh, as, as you were talking and sharing, I'm like, man, yeah, some of those things seem more advanced or more complex, but you're either doing it now and paying for the app or you're paying, you're, you're taking more time away from yourself or you're going to have to pay someone else for their time. So right. it's like one or the other. And oftentimes you set up the app, you set up the process and then it kind of goes and you just check in on it versus so you hire someone. There's like higher variants for like quality and timing and accuracy and all this stuff. So it might end up being cheaper to just start with the apps and tools, right? What do they say? Like more money, more problems. So like the more you grow your business, the more you're going to have to do and the more you're going to have to concentrate on. And the way I look at it is like, if you do buy a house or you move into a house, you're going to put an alarm. Chances are, right, the, this day and age, you're going to put some kind of alarm system, a ring, camera, something's going to happen. And it's just, so these things that I mentioned, it's like the ring camera. Like, yes, we just moved into the home, but you're going to want some level of security associated with that. Because once we start moving all of our stuff in and we get busy in our lives and work and kids and this and that, like, you're not going to be thinking about that stuff. Right. So. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, that helped me because uh, I'm in the middle of navigating a migration for uh, Stumptown, uh, the job I started not too long ago from WooCommerce to Shopify. So it's like from scratch. So I'm like, man, do I really need that right away? Do, what do I want versus what do I need? And I think you're convincing me to uh, get some, uh, a few extra things in there earlier rather than later. So yeah, and this has know, been helpful. And, and also like I was listening to this thing on TikTok recently and the girl was like, you could, if you're a real estate agent, you're trying to do commercial real estate, you could go two ways. One that's going to take you 10 years and one that's going to happen within the first year where you're going to grow your business really quickly. Which one do you want to do? Yes, you're going to have to suffer. You're going to have to pay. You're going to have to this. You're going to have to that. Sweat equity, whatever is going on with that. Yeah. But it's going to help you get there a lot quicker than if you just like wait, 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 wait 10 years later, you know? Yeah. So I kind of look at it like that. Okay. Yeah. No, that's cool. Uh, that's great. So then you've kind of listed and named off kind of all the different like holes to plug or things to add on to that. Uh, most Shopify templates uh, are kind of missing on purpose or unintentionally because of the app ecosystem and all that stuff. So if you had to have must haves, uh, narrow it down a little bit uh, for like a store under a million dollars. And generally speaking, it's, it's not any super luxury thing. It's like a normal sort of standard store. Are the, you, you mentioned a tool like Clavio, so like some sort of email, SMS kind of customer 
relationship sort of thing. Nit, what are a couple other ones or other um, wants or needs you kind of want to plug in? Upsell, cross-sell, like whether it's, you know, pre-sale, post-purchase, whatever the case may be, all of the above, you definitely want to have something like that in place. Um, personalization on the website and personalization can be a whole host of things, whether it's, you know, um, offering up charging on per product pricing, like if you were selling fabrics or wedding invitations or cakes or whatever, and you want to be able to like offer specific specifications mm. in that, um, or, uh, if you want to do some kind of on-site search, that's very personalized or, um, there's various ways where you can personalize the page, but I think having those types of things in there and then the reviews part, like that's a hundred percent necessary. Um, I'm sure we're missing a few, like, and people will argue that you need a few other ones that I haven't mentioned today. I'm sure in the comments people would be like, but you forgot about this like major one that we have to have. And it's like, you know, but the, off the top of my head, those are like the three yeah. main, I mean, I'd say rewind as well. And again, I'm not affiliated with them. It sounds like I am. I'm really not, but I'm like, <laughs> I love having insurance. Insurance yes. too on products is another. Well, that's a nice to have probably, but it depends on the price of the product though. Like if you've got a high price product, then that should be an early day acquisition for an app as well. Yeah, for sure. That makes sense. Um, so. Oh, wait. And if you're selling furniture, 3D, like some kind of way to do an AR, mm. VR type scenario, like. I don't even feel like that's a nice to have anymore. I feel like that's an absolutely fucking you have to have it. Excuse my language, but you do. Like, come on. It's okay, Deb. This is an adult podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. But yeah, uh, especially for that type of thing, it's more and more common to shop online. Uh, you may not have a local store near you, or you just don't want to get up and, you know, like more and more people are shopping every day online. It's going to continue to grow and go that way. So especially for that type of stuff, I think it's yeah. really, really good call out there. Oh, you um, need to have a returns thing too. So like a return logic or something like that, where you have some kind of something really good in place for that. Um, and it goes back to the AR VR. Sorry, I'm going to go back to that. Um, you know, if you're selling makeup, for instance, like, okay, so a good example of something that happened recently. So I really wanted, you know, I'm saying this on a podcast, but I really wanted the Dior like lip oil that was really popular. And it was like out of stock for forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And it's finally not. And so, um, I tried to go to Sephora. They don't have the same colors as they have on the other site, but you can't try them on on Sephora. You can't try them on, but if you go to Dior, you can. So if you use your mobile phone, um, you can try on the lip colors and decide what matches your face. I mean, that is such a no brainer. Like why wouldn't right. you selling beauty products? Like wow. why wouldn't you offer that? Yeah, that's super, that's super. Uh, I can't relate the makeup uh, as much. So, but I, I could see how that'd be super helpful and like a no brainer for a lot of products like that, where it's very personal and it's about you know, like your appearance and how it makes you feel. Uh, and it's your body and like face and skin. And so I think that's. I mean, and also like selfishly from the merchant standpoint, like you're going to get a lot of returns if it doesn't match it. Like right. if you, a certain color is going to be good and then they get it home and it's not, you're going to get that return. Yeah. So it's like you kind of keep mentioning and coming back to this like foundation idea and not like foundation for your face, foundation for the business and your store is if you just try to solve it now it'll be less of an issue later <laughs> and you'll have less returns. You'll have higher customer like reviews and ratings and people will be more likely to tell their friends and word of mouth and all that stuff. So I see what you'll, you're getting at. You'll feel like a more mature business to them and you'll establish that trust. Like, you know, you've gone to those stores, right? And you could tell they were just built by like, someone's uncle last weekend. And it's like not, the images don't even line up and everything's just like, crazy and nothing and like they've got this popping up and that thing going crazy over here and spin the wheel and you're just like ow like this is painful and this is a brand new business and i don't want to buy from you because you're going out of business next year the, the psychology behind that of like okay yeah i want to help this like small guy succeed obviously but then also like i want to make sure that i can like become a repeat customer if i really like their products um 
And so again, like going back into the psychology, like you would want to go with the more established one. We were like, okay, you're going to be around for forever. We are going to have this long-term relationship versus the guy where you show up with the spin the wheel and uncle Fred just built it. And you're like, I don't know, like, is, is my product even going to arrive or what's going to happen here? Right. But can I, can I even talk to a human? Like, is it just <laughs> like, oh, I sent them a support message. 14 days ago and like you know uh i mean but like to to be fair like <laughs> that's some like big brands still have those issues and they didn't take care of it in the early days and they don't scale up enough and you buy things and then they don't exclude you from the new emails so you're just getting blasted with sales and all this stuff and you're like well can you just tell like where's my order at like, bro, like, can you just answer me instead of right. just trying to get me to buy new stuff yet? Right. Or like, I bought three things from you this year. My birthday was last week. Like, where is my gift? Yeah. Give me, Your- give me something. Yeah. Like, where's my email about my birthday? Yeah. And those are like relatively simple, low lift things that are not super complicated to get set up, especially with all the apps and tools and stuff out there. Yeah, like, um, you know, hello, like, that's why you need a sophisticated system like that. Again, I'm not affiliated. I don't know. Whatever. But <laughs> sorry to put those disclaimers in there. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, no, totally. Um, yeah, I, I see. I, this is all like very, I didn't realize how relevant this conversation would be to me personally, <laughs> because I'm in the like starting process of working with the agency to migrate and kind of rebuild and redesign everything and man i think this is like this is cool this has been good for me so far so thank you so this has been great no problem no problem um okay so switching gears a little bit um some sometimes it's an app sometimes it's uh live streaming through social media but live shopping and so we've been hearing about this off and on in different ways over the years uh, one example, I, I watched a documentary on one of the streaming services lately, recently on Lula Row, which is like the huge, uh, like retailer and like, they had like essentially affiliate pyramid scheme, essentially, uh, built yep. out. <laughs> so yeah. they, they made great use of it, but many, there's been other brands that have like been effective with this, but mm-hmm. I don't know if it's the right fit for everyone. So what can you share about live shopping and live streaming like for brands? And then how can we help people de- determine if their brand or product or their founder personality or like fits for live streaming, live shopping? A quick reminder from our sponsor. Checkout links allows you to create simple and effective short links that go straight to your checkout for your social media pages, paid ads, customer support tickets, direct messages, holiday specific offers, brand new product launches, or even adding a QR code to your packaging or insert with a checkout link for easy reordering in just seconds. Once again, go to checkoutlinks.com to learn more, install that Shopify app. That's checkoutlinks.com slash Matt. A quick reminder from our sponsor, ShareID. Find your next lifetime customers by providing verified discount codes based on occupation or life stage. Speak directly to veterans, students, teachers, first responders, and continue to tailor your messaging to them in the future with post-purchase emails and text messages. Make them feel seen with your brand by using ShareID to seamlessly verify their email in seconds during the purchase process. Go to shareid.com slash Shopify and start your free trial today. You know, I love this conversation and it bothers me when I hear people say like, oh, it's like QVC on TV. No, no. I, I get what you're saying and I understand why you're drawing that comparison, but it's not the same. Okay. And there's a reason why this has been so popular in China and that we're now starting to really see, re- reap some benefits out of it. And, and we're only kind of, I feel like we're at the beginning of it, even though we've been talking about it now for, I've been talking about it for years. I think the buzzword of it has been the last like year and a half, two years. Um, but we're seeing so much more. So I like live on TikTok now, like I've kind yeah. of abandoned everything else pretty okay. much. I mean, we could talk about some of the other ones, but, and there are like specific services like network and, you know, apps specifically for live shopping, which work really, really well. But I think for the sake of this conversation, because of the plugin availability with 
Shopify and TikTok. Um, I'd just like to spend some time talking specifically yeah. about that today, unless you wanted to go deeper or broader. No, that um, works. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, I mean, Shopify's made it super easy to to do live shopping on TikTok. You don't have to be like a very, very large store in order to have your products appear. So like you go live, you you don't have to do a lot either to get prepared. You're either in your storefront or you make a pretend storefront. So like, you know how you see like the white background here? You have no idea what I'm staring at in front of me. So you yeah. make it like super clean and you have your products like hanging on the wall. Like, so for instance, I'm a, I've become obsessed with this like wig company, right? And I don't even like wigs. I don't wear wigs. I'm not, I've never been interested in wigs, but I'm obsessed, I'm literally obsessed with this live shopping. Um, and one of their channels, they have like 10 channels. This one company has like 10 channels on TikTok. And what they do is they hire these models to in their apartment, they like have a room and that do just what I said. So they have all of the wigs like hang on the bottom. They have numbers associated with them. And then some of them will go in chronological order or in their comments, they'll just say like number 73, number 43, whatever. And then they like, so there's a lot of audience participation. So there's a right. reason you keep coming back because it's like fun. Cause you're like, Oh, they called my number. They talked, they talked to me. Like I feel this intimate relationship. So now there's like trust being built. They're answering questions on the fly about customer service returns, what the product's made of, what the pitfalls are, what they should be considering. It's not human hair. It's synthetic hair. You, you need to do this. You need to care for it this way. You need to shampoo it this way. Like all the things wow. that you would want to sort of get to know about this product. And then when they, Put the wig on they're trying the wig on and they're showcasing and they're cute the you know obviously the models are like really cute and they turn around and look look really good and the product appears at the bottom that you can click on and buy it directly from their site wow. so it's just the e and the price point is like 25 bucks or whatever 26 dollars, 30 bucks a wig whatever it's like so low that you get so excited in the moment i, I have considered buying them multiple times. <laughs> You know, and I, don't, I literally do not want a wig at all. I've never wanted one, but I'm like, oh, for 30 bucks, like maybe I'll wear it for Halloween. Like maybe I'll just like have a little fun, you know, whatever. Like, I'm literally right, like, right, it's, right. So it's that easy. So to answer your question, like doing something at a, like a lower price point, that's like that, like an under $50 to where you can drum up that excitement. You can sort of sell the dream of it by people seeing it on them you can quickly swiftly move through products as well so that's another thing like they put it on they talk about it really quickly they take it off they, they're on to the next one you know they've got 100 wigs to get through in two hours and plus like mm. you know talking to people they have a whole blown operation going on so this is something to consider you know there's clearly somebody who's dealing with the chat there's clearly somebody that's grabbing the wigs off of the the um, wall, then you've got the girl that's trying it on. So there's a few, I would say at least there's three people, if not four, maybe five involved in mm. this one operation. Okay. Um, so if you're just like a single preneur, uh, you got to pull up a few friends or, you know, in this case, they, they're hiring models. Like I, they can't be paying them a ton to do it. And I started doing the math on the thing. And I was like, in a day, I mean, the money that they're pulling off of this is far more justifying paying that model or those five people than if you were slugging around trying to do it yourself by yourself. So, right. And that getting further quicker type of thing, uh, you know, putting that investment in at the onset so um, you can grow a lot faster. Wow. Cool. No, that that's amazing. I didn't know how good the, I thought I saw something about the integration a while back, but you, the way you explained it with Shopify and TikTok is it was great. And I think it makes so much sense for a lot of, you know, a lot of products that are more visual, which is like, I don't know, kind of a weird thing to say because a lot of products you need to see in action or you want to see it on somebody, but just even like a clothing boutique, like yeah. maybe you have two models and they like keep switching out the like next item. And then it's like a tag team, like two co-hosts. And then it is different from QVC, like you're saying, because it's not that one or two people calling in, it's this live chat and you see everyone else's messages and there's more of this like, oh, we're in this together. I'm not stuck here kind of thing. I can just scroll on if I'm not interested or my question did get answered or whatever. So there's this low barrier to like 
commitment and all this stuff. So I think I think uh, I think that makes sense for it can make sense for a lot of brands. So besides it's, wigs, yeah, go ahead. It's a community as well. Like people come back. You know, like I come, I don't want to do anything. Like I come back just to watch it. You know, yeah. Like, yeah find it so incredibly entertaining and everyone else does. So they're like, Oh, I'm nice to see you again. Like, you know, so it, there is that community feel, but also like, like for art, you know, like things like this, maybe they're right. like a hundred dollars or something. Like imagine like all this crap that you see on like Etsy, you know, being able to kind of move through a room and be like, Oh, look, this looks really cute on my wall in front of my desk or, you know, and so they're selling the dream again, but it's happening sort of in a, in a 3d environment. Right. Okay. That's cool. Okay. So art, wigs, clothing. What are, what are, what do we think are some other brands or products that might be a good fit? Literally everything. I mean, I can pretty much <laughs> an argument for anything. Like I okay. think, you know, like you can even, if you're selling, like if you're Om Som or something and you're selling like spicy, uh, chili stuff, um, and all, you know, the variety of products that go with that. It's like, you could do like a mukbang with their products and mm -hmm. like have a full blown conversation with like three or four people and try different things like this kind of chip, this kind of dip, you know, whatever. And like show different variations wow. of it and uses of it. Um, that could be a killer way of, of yeah. doing, or doing collabs like that with like liquid death or yeah, I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud, but yeah. you know, just stuff. Like wow. That. Okay. So but literally you could sell any crap. Like, I don't mean to, I'm going to say this out loud, but like, there is this one, <laughs> there's like several people that do it, but there's like this whole community of people that like to buy these like crystals and things like that, like different kind of rock things. Yeah. And I'm not, no shade against people that are into that stuff. It's, you know, to each his own, but they've got this like spin the wheel sort of situation where it's like a a rock sand thing and all the crystals are in it and the sand just kind of goes through this thing it's like a loud like audio thing and they take a scoop so you buy a scoop for like 30 but again another like 30 dollar thing you buy a scoop and they scoop into this thing and it's a random selection so you don't know what you're gonna get it's just like your name's being called during the live event you're getting the scoop you're watching it being bagged and it's a bunch of crap, right? Like, sorry to say, <laughs> like it is a bunch of crap, but like Pete, they're selling so much of it. It is in, and it's happening all day long, like literally yeah. all day long. Wow. Um, so, or like there's another woman who, um, in the UK, she sells products from the UK, but she also sells products from like around the world. So you'll get like, you know, those Mountain Dew flavors that are like kind of <laughs> unique now or whatever. Yeah. So you could buy, like, imagine being in the UK and, like, wanting to get your hands on, like, some kind of, you know, novelty US product. Um, so all day she's just, like, bagging. And, again, it's like, oh, your name's being called and you're watching your box being bagged that day in real time on the live. And there's just people love that stuff so right. much, you know. Um, so, it, you know, food and beverage, again, like, that type of wow. stuff. Wow. Yeah. Literally, thing is what i'm trying to say no no i uh, i'm aware of how ignorant or unaware i was of all this like this is incredible uh this is great i think you can make the case <laughs> for just about anything um i'm trying to think for stump town like we have a we have our, our our mattresses are in a retail store we could just go walk through and be like oh yeah here's Here's the here's the peak. Here's the hybrid. Here's the original. Like, kind of just like me flopping down onto the bed or something, and be like, "Oh yeah, here's the." Pound on it. We're having a pillow party today. <laughs> Come Wednesday at one p.m. PT. We're gonna have a pillow party on this particular mattress in the showroom. You yeah. want to be a part of it, you know, and like make it fun and have like confetti like throw you know falling from the ground and maybe do like a baby reveal that day or something fun with like somebody that's like an audience participant and then if they win like they get like a discount off for their wedding or whatever like I don't yeah know. yeah there's so basically you're just saying you don't have to just dump money into facebook ads and google ads right. to be able to get sales there's other way other channels oh my go. god if i had a shopify store i would be like i would figure out how i could get models from all over time zones to be doing these live shopping things all darn day long okay um, on different channels and build yeah. up like 10 different channels and just sell sell stuff all day okay 
we're gonna come back to that maybe offline because uh, I might have something for you. Okay. But... <laughs> so going back to live, so I'm gonna yeah. kind of get off live shopping, but I'm gonna stay on TikTok, and okay. I wanna I wanna just talk about this because I do work with a pre order app. I work with two pre order apps. And we have had so much fun watching some of the store owners use our apps during their live. So they'll do like a live event um, where they do a launch for the pre-order. Mm. And it's really cool. They show like the Shopify dashboard. They show where people are from all over the place. They show how many sales, how many people are in add to carts. Like it's so exciting. And then obviously you're pre-ordering. So you know when you're going to get it in advance, it's like a whole big event. So there's a lot that goes into planning ahead, having the event, and then sort of the post-purchase after that. Um, sure. That's really exciting. So not just live shopping in terms of like, here's my product, we're selling it online, but also maybe considering it for like, okay, do a lot of, like if you sell sweatshirts, do a lot of content leading up to the pre-order event that you've scheduled ahead of time with your audience and then send them an email out and say, okay, we're going live and then go live. And you're not really like showcasing products and doing that live. You're doing the, oh my gosh, the big event here is happening. Like, look at the sales flowing in. We're all celebrating together. And then it encourages other shoppers and people that are watching to then purchase at the same time. Right. Because yeah. it's, it's not manufactured. It's not fake um, urgency or scarcity or any of these things. It's like, this is live. I'm showing it to you. Like, this is real. We're not just saying the product's going out of stock or we have a few left. Like, is, when I get stuff like that, I'm like, I know not all of this is true all the time. <laughs> like, you just stop. You like you just stink at like uh, your inventory purchasing. Like, oh yeah, we're going out of stock. Well, you only bought ten to like begin with. Like, of course you're almost out of stock after five. But anyway, I think that's a really interesting angle and what different way to go about it, so that there's like different uh, top events. Like you're saying, it's pre-launch. It's this new product there is like this just ongoing you have a weekly kind of check-in show or community ask questions maybe you turn it one into oh we have we'll invite customers on and talk about this stuff right yeah. and then you just get to hear from them versus just the text reviews that you see on the site so yeah. different people respond to different things when they're shopping so you're getting my brain spinning a little and turning in a good way a little bit right now. So Well, it is like right. online reviews, but if you're doing it live, then the chat kind of is your review source because people are like, yep. oh, I bought during the last pre-launch and <laughs> it was really great. I That's like my favorite sweatshirt that I've ever owned. And like, I've been dying to get a hold of your next, you know, launch or whatever. And so it just becomes this like cult, like following that, you wow. know, I don't know if you know Johnny's Cupcakes, but he was kind of like the innovator of building up that level of hype of like, mm. okay, well, we're only going to drop this many t-shirts of this particular style. Yeah. And once they're gone, like, they're gone. Gone. We're sorry yeah. for you. So it's that kind of thing that happens yeah. with pre-orders, I think. And, and when it's happening in an online thing, then you're organically building up that community of people that are like, oh my gosh, yeah, I bought the sweatshirt last time. And so then the next pre-launch that they have, like in two months from now, when they have another launch or product launch, then those people return. They're like, oh my gosh, I remember you from, you know, and so then that's how it keeps going. Yeah. Or yeah. yeah. And like, again, word of mouth and like telling your friends, oh, where'd you get that sweatshirt? Or where'd you get that t-shirt? Well, it's the next, I, I got it from this thing. The next stream is next week. Like, you know, like that sort of thing. So yeah. Yeah. you're helping, you're helping your, like your customers help become salesmen for you. Totally. I mean, you're just yeah. modernizing the the review or the UGC experience in yeah. a way that builds trust. That's literally all this is, is a way of saying like, there are real people behind this. I look like them. I want to look like them. I feel like them. I want to feel like them. I want to be a part of this somehow, like the wig thing. Like, I don't even like wigs, but like somehow I now want to be a part <laughs> of this thing. Like, you know, so yeah. that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. And like, Sweet. I think with like the crystal, like the scoop thing that I was talking about, it's like, Ooh, I want my name called. Like, I want to be a part of like this, whatever this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's awesome. With makeup, you can like test the show. Like, here's like here's the different like shades like on me right now. This is not Photoshop. This is not you know. Here's the light. You know, it's just more real. So that's pretty okay. interesting. 
Beauty Bakery has this lipstick that if you like, it's smudge proof. So if you, oh, go like yeah. it, it like doesn't come off. So they could do stuff like that where they go like this and then they turn their hand around and you don't see the red or whatever, you know, like that kind of stuff would be perfect for live shopping. Wow. Okay. No, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting hyped then. You, you're selling me on live shopping <laughs> while we're live. So I love it. Uh, I love it. That's okay, awesome. so so live shopping can be for just about anyone. There's a bunch of ways to go about it. And so try to think about it, for, see if it makes sense for you right now or if you need to plan ahead for the future. Yeah, I think uh, with your mattresses, like anything that accompanies the mattresses, like so the main event of what you're doing is on the mattress, but I think the way to sell products while you're doing that, just to test it out, is selling ancillary products. So like if you have candles that are sold on the in online store, like you're, you know hey, this goes with, you know, the mattress and smells really good. And yeah. like stuff that sort of is lower price points that kind of like, ooh, here's the sheets that you could put on that are like 150 bucks. So the pillow. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. That's cool. No, that's, that's great. Um, okay. So switching gears a little bit uh, into our last little topic is it's Q4. This episode's going to be released in a, a little while. It's before Black Friday while when you're listening to this, but it's coming. So this is like the Super Bowl. This is like the World Championship, whatever sports analogy you want to use. This is like our time for e-commerce founders, agencies, freelancers, consultants. Like this is the big event every year. This is when everyone's buying stuff. It's like the society cultural thing, right? So how how do we take care of ourselves? Like this is not like five quick tips to make sure you're going to have the best sales ever. This is like <laughs> with you and me right now, this is about how to like take care of yourself during this time. How do you manage your expectations? How to take care of your like self-care and mental health? You've been through uh, a Black Friday or two, so uh, you have experience with this. So I'd love to just hear uh, from you on this. I mean, I feel like this wraps up in a nice big red bow. Like what we were talking about in the beginning is like, setting yourself up for success. Something that I talk about a lot uh, on Twitter or just like in my personal life in general is what does future Debbie want that is going to make her be better, yeah. feel better, be more successful, whatever the case may be. So like, you know, that day where like you didn't want to unload the dishwasher, but you were like, if I wake up tomorrow morning and I see dishes in the sink, I'm going to feel like worse than I did if I didn't have that. Yeah. So I think we're sitting in a place, I don't know exactly when this is going to launch, but yeah. if, if we're looking at now, um, do the things now that are going to set up future, whatever the name of your store is for success so that you're not scrambling. So you're not plugging holes. So you're not, you know, there isn't this huge like hurricane that's come through and you're now having to try to figure out how to, you know, not get mold on the floor, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but if you're not that prepared and you didn't do all of those things, then you just need to remain calm. Like this is all you can do is what you can do, no matter what it is, no matter when it is. And I think keeping yourself grounded in that way every day is so whatever that means to you, whether you're journaling, you're meditating, you're walking, you're exercising, you're talking to your kids, you're swinging in a swing, you're walking in nature, whatever it might be that's going to help keep you grounded, you have to not put that by the wayside because you're busier. Like you have to put that first before you put the money, before you put the operation, before yeah. you put your brand. Um, because without yourself being okay, none of that will be okay. And like, if you're okay, that's going to thrive. Right. Yeah. So as long as you can keep yourself grounded in that way and remember, like I come first, no matter what, um, like the time, you know, like I'm going to put that mask on myself before I put it on anybody else. It's the same with your business. And so I think that, but I mean, I think being prepared, like the rewind stuff that we, you know, all this stuff, making sure yeah. everything is like that stuff's really important and having like, a support system. So if you have other e-commerce owners, like partners, developers, marketers, friends that are in the industry, other shop owners, start trying to like build up that right now so that you can like have a lifeline. And whenever you do have those like one-off questions or those needs that unforeseen come up, obviously during Black Friday, you have someone you can fall on and they're a good net and they'll help you. 
Yes, that's awesome. That's really good advice, and it it it'll it, it's very applicable to outside of this time for sure. Always put on your oxygen mask first before helping someone else. And if you if you get the money and you get all the success, but if you're not healthy, if you're not your mind's not right, you can't fully enjoy it or fully make the most of it. So it's not, you know, the struggle sometimes isn't worth it. So I think that's a really good yeah. We've- we've all experienced burnout, right? And most of the time when you have burnout, it, you've caught it way too late. Yep. Like you see the signs and you're just like, oh, ignore, like oh, ignore. And then all of a sudden you're like a mess. And so I think that's applicable here. Yep. Yeah. So plan ahead, get your plan set up, control what you can get some support systems, get some people in place that know what you're going through and ask for more support from friends or family if you have them and be like, hey, this is like, this period is gonna be tough. Like if I'm a little short with you or if I'm not available as much, it's not you. Uh, this is like really important for my me and my business. And most people, if you communicate pretty clearly and ahead of time like that, and they're good friends and family, then they should be supportive of you. And that. They'll just help take down this like anxiety and stress a little bit more. Yeah. Or if they're at the same level of you around the same level as you in business, or they're a mentor to you, then that's even better because they want to help. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think for some people like myself, it's really hard to ask for help and admit that I'm, uh, don't know everything or I need help with something that seems so easy and simple to maybe others, but, uh, it doesn't like, no, yet, no one yet has ever shamed me for asking for help or asking a stupid question. So it's just like, you're okay. It's a, you're allowed to ask for help. You're allowed to lean on other people just because yeah. you're an entrepreneur. doesn't mean you have to do everything by yourself. So that, I mean, how are you yeah. ever going to survive? Like, how are you ever going to grow without some lifelines? Yep. Yeah, yeah. We're not supposed to be these super individual people. We're like, we're social creatures, like by nature and evolution, all that stuff. So find your community, find your tribe and lean on them and they can lean on you too. So yeah, uh, Deb, this is amazing. This is great. We talked about a lot of different things. But last question is if there's anything that's been on the top of your mind or you've been burning to say, because you've been, oh, maybe he'll ask me about it. Is, I'll give you one last chance to speak about anything. Um, no, I mean, I thought I think we had a really good conversation today, so I cool. feel I feel good about everything we covered. We covered AR, VR, live shopping, the Shopify apps that I work on. Oh, by the way, the two pre-order apps that I mentioned earlier, I didn't name them. Is it okay if I do that? Go for it. Okay, um, pre-order now and uh, pre-orderly are available on Shopify. Awesome, Deb. Uh, appreciate your time. Where can people find you or check out more of the apps you work with? Where, what do you want to plug at the end of this show? Um, you can find me on Twitter, Deb Mecca. Right on. That's it. That's all. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. We'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks for having me, Matt. Have a great yep, day. You bet. That's it for today. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. I love being able to do this, continue to learn and meet people in this industry. Every rating, review, and episode you share with a friend means so much to me as I'm bootstrapping this show as part of my media brand, High Key Geek. If you haven't checked out my other show, Brand Builders, you should. It's with myself and Tom Brown and Richie Mashiko. Two times a week, we talk in a much more casual setting, and we think out loud, we brainstorm, and we share our lessons as we continue to operate and run businesses in the DTC space today. We're not we didn't exit. We didn't just consult and advise now. And we don't, we're in the trenches as we like every day still. So we're learning in real time and sharing it with you as we go. That's brand builders on high key geek, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, or wherever else you find your podcast. Catch you next time.